Hey guys, I'm Alistair from Trail and & Kill and today I am reviewing the Nike Pegasus Trail 4. So if you've been following Trail & Kill for a while now, you probably saw my first review about the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, which was Nike's first Pegasus Trail shoe. Since that shoe a few years ago, Nike has uh, done the Pegasus Trail 2, 3, and now the 4, and in my opinion, the shoes were kind of going downhill until we've hit the fourth generation. Um, and I'm pleased to say this shoe is actually heading back towards the Pegasus 36 trails. So initial impressions of the Nike Pegasus Trail 4 are very good, but let me get into the details of this shoe and what it's actually really like out on the trails. Let's start with how the sizing feels, how it fits, is it true to size as a trail running shoe? Um, I can confirm the Pegasus Trail 4 is true to size. Um, I wear a US size 9 and this fits just as good as any other brand like On Running, Adidas um, and other Nike running shoes for that matter. So fit is very comfortable out of the box. You won't have to break these in. There's tons of flex in the shoe as you can see in pretty much every direction. Tons of padding around the, the upper as well. Um, and a nice soft tongue with a very good lacing system. So comfort out the box is really great in these shoes. Just glossing over the technical specs of this shoe very quickly then, if you want to learn more about this shoe, um, a more in-depth look at it, definitely check out my review on trailandkale.com. I've got way more pictures on there um, and just deeper insights into how they actually run um, and how they compare to other Nike running shoes in the past. But very quickly, let's go over the main specs on this. The shoe weighs around 290 grams, so it's not the lightest shoe, it's not the heaviest either. Um, it feels light in the hand, it feels pretty light after running for a few hours in them as, as well. So um, I wouldn't worry about the weight, uh, looking at that on paper. Uh, the width of the shoe is average, so medium width, uh, if you've got medium with toe box or feet in general, then these will be okay. If you've got very wide feet, then um, I would consider looking at maybe a different shoe. So when I say it's going back to the Nike Pegasus 36 trail, I actually have one here because I bought up a whole load of them because I love the shoe that much. So as you can see from the profile, there are a lot of similarities to the shoes. Uh, some improvements to the latest Pegasus Trail 4. There's a loop at the back there and it's big enough for a finger. So a couple of generations ago, Nike really messed up with their finger loops. You couldn't actually get your finger in there, especially if you're wearing gloves on cold winter runs. So they fixed that issue. Um, they've actually gone back to this lacing system here where you've got these little is a stretchy string here which allows your feet to expand within the shoe and um, keeps your feet more comfortable uh, if you're running for long periods of time so that was in the previous or the original like Pegasus Trail as well um, quickly on breathability as well I mean very similar upper um, so you've got that there it's a very breathable shoe Toe cap is solid, so if you stub any rocks or roots, you'll be okay there. That's solid. So yeah, pretty similar. Wouldn't you agree? Let me know in the comments down below. Now the shoe has a 9mm drop from heel to toe. And it has quite a, a high stack on the shoe. Um, so personally I like to see a lower drop on these shoes. Um, but worth knowing that it's 9mm and that does put you in that slightly forward leaning stance to give you more of an aggressive running style. Because these shoes are door to trail or hybrid shoes, so they should technically work as well on the road as they do on light trails. So that's what this shoe is all about. Let's get into it and let's find out what they're actually like for running with. Okay, so running on the roads in the Nike Pegasus Trail 4, what's it like? They are marketed as a daughter trail shoe, so they should be pretty good on the road. And uh, I can confirm I've got to run 
um, roughly a kilometer before I get to my local trail on the road. So I need a shoe that's got enough padding to get me there without feeling uncomfortable um, until I get to the trails. And as you can see, these shoes are using Nike React Foam. So that's a very cushy foam. You can see here, if I squish on this, I mean, these, these things compress like crazy. Um, now that's great on the road. Uh, I enjoy having that. It absorbs any very small rocks uh, so you don't feel anything underfoot. And it generally gives a nice cushioned ride on the road. This also holds very true for light trail. So if you've got very small rocks, um, and very hard buffed ground and these shoes are really good for that kind of terrain now my local trails I've got very varying terrain I've got rocks I've got roots um, all sorts of hard rocky kind of terrain and also small bits of scree and grit um, which can lead to a lot of slipping on the trails if I don't have shoes with enough grip or control for that matter. So going back to the Nike React foam in this shoe, what's that like on technical trails? Um, well, personally, I don't like them on the technical trails because there's way too much cushioning in the React foam. I've always been a fan of Zoom foam from Nike and the only shoe in the Nike Trail range right now that has zoom is the Terra Kaiga 8. So for that reason, the Terra Kaiga 8 is always going to be the winner for me this season. It just feels like it absorbs too much energy for me. I like to be able to read the trails, work with the trails and kind of work my way around them um, using my experience of reading trails. So when you've got a really cushioned midsole like this that can throw you off a bit and it can actually lead to you rolling an ankle if you're not careful so yeah there are circumstances where cushioning like this is great and for me that's on roads and light trails before i go on then let me just take you over to my local trail and give you some first-hand insights of what these shoes are like to run in it is insanely hot here today it's around 34 degrees Celsius. Um, so I thought I'd walk this hill and give you some trail insights on the Pegasus Trail 4. Um, been on quite a few runs with these. Took them to Tahoe last week, so I did some nice steep mountain running in them. Um, and I'm really pleased to say they are actually going back towards the Pegasus 36 trail, a shoe that I really liked. Um, so yeah, they're very comfortable. Uh, the midsole is using the React foam, not the Zoom foam. So there's definitely more squish and a little bit of energy loss when running on trails with rocks kind of sticking out. But when you've got buff trails, and roads because these are a road to trail shoe it's a very good hybrid shoe for all sorts of running um, so they're really good midsole works really nicely on those kinds of buff solid more simple trails um, when you start getting rocks anything kind of like this kind of stuff terrain that's going to make an impact on your shoe. The midsole kind of absorbs those kind of rocks and I actually prefer it um, with a midsole that doesn't take so much absorption and energy loss. So I like to feel the trail and I like to kind of scan the trail ahead of me and uh, kind of work around it or work with the trail. But these shoes kind of, they seem to be designed to kind of glide through the trail and uh, I guess that's good for beginners but more experienced intermediate kind of uh, runners are going to prefer a little bit less cushioning in that midsole and that's why I really like the zoom midsole and the only shoe in the night trail range at the moment that has the zoom midsole is the Terra Kiger 8 
So that shoe is always going to be my top pick for this season because of that midsole. Um, but all in all, this is definitely the best Pegasus Trail since the Pegasus 36 Trail. So yeah, really enjoying the Pegasus Trail 4 at the moment. Uh, now back to the review. Well, I hope that little segment was helpful to you. Um, showed you what kind of trails I run on locally and uh, gives you an idea of what they're like to run on trails. But going more into it now, I want to quickly talk about what they're like for climbing. The Nike Pegasus Trail 4 is a great climbing shoe. Uh, there's tons of breathability, so I find when I'm climbing my feet tend to get hot because they're really working hard. Uh, generally don't like to walk on the art pills. I like to keep a rhythm and keep running as much as I can. Um, so the reason they're good is you've got these pretty aggressive lugs on the front here and it's very sticky rubber that they're made out of and I just found myself hooking into the trail as I was going uphill and had no trouble from them at all. So a great shoe for climbing. Right now, what are they like for downhill running? So, as I said earlier, light trails, these are great. And that holds true for running downhill as well. If you tend to heel strike a little bit, then the Nike React Foam has got you. It's going to compress a lot of that impact and give you a good experience running fast downhill. But if you hit anything technical with this midsole, which actually is on quite a high stack, so you're kind of quite high off the ground in these shoes. Um, I just find I'm losing a bit too much control. I mean, there's tons of flex, um, which is great in a shoe, but I like my ankles to be able to manage that flex themselves rather than have a cushion sole kind of add extra roll to that movement. So. I just found myself fighting the, the crazy cushioning in these midsole, unfortunately, on anything more technical than buff trails. Um, but it did give a comfortable ride on light, um, easy trails. So pros and cons of this shoe. If you're not going to be running technical trails, then I'd say definitely go for this, give it a try. I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised with the shoe. Running fast in the Nike Pegasus Trail 4, yes. I can run really fast in them and I really enjoy the ride on road and light trails. So it's a shoe that I feel like I can really open up with and that is because of the flex here and also the cushioning underfoot. And because of that cushioning, I felt I could open up my stride and maybe take more impact in my, um, in my form whilst running. So yes, I found out I can run pretty quickly in these shoes. So comparing the Nike Pegasus Trail 4 to other trail running shoes that I've been running in lately, which includes Salomon, uh, Innovate, On Running, and another Nike shoe as well, um, definitely go check out trailandkill.com for all the latest shoe reviews. I'll give you an idea of what kind of shoes I test um, and how often I test them, because I'm going through trail shoes like you wouldn't believe. So I've got great experience on how they all perform. And compared to other shoes on the market right now, the Pegasus Trail 4 is definitely above average and I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely staying in my rotation for anything that isn't too technical, um, just to get more miles in a recovery run and stuff like that. Uh, the shoes are great. I am training for Matterhorn Old Tracks. Uh, it's about a 50 kilometer mountain race in Switzerland, so I do need to get miles in and this shoe is really gonna help me with that. So as I said earlier, it's a very good shoe, but it does have some caveats. So personally, if you are a trail runner who likes to run on technical trails, wants a slightly lighter shoe, um, one that doesn't have as much cushioning, you want more control, less lateral roll going on, then definitely check out, check out the Terrakiger 8. Uh, that uses the Zoom midsole. And in my opinion, it's a slightly more superior shoe and it's my choice from a Nike trail range for sure. Um, there's going to be a review of that coming very soon so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that one as well because I'm excited to share some of the insights that I've, I've uh, got on that shoe. 
Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Night Pegasus 12 full review. If you did, definitely give us a comment down below, give this video a like, and consider subscribing to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks again, see you next time. Mm -hmm.